grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when I was in high school, I was one of the helpers on the tech crew for uh, building the set and doing the scene changes for the musical Maine. And uh, I really enjoyed that, and uh, this time of the year I always get brought back to a memory about it because of a particular song. Maine was an eccentric woman who was raising her um, nephew uh, during the time of the Great Depression. And when she heard the news of the stock market crash and how that had affected her and all that she had lost, she burst into the song, We Need a Little Christmas, Break This Very Moon. You know, that, that with all the, 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 the unpleasantness, all the turmoil that's going on, right this very minute, we need to get the decorations out, we need to rush it, we need to bring in some happiness right now, we need to have some Christmas. The song is a little bit dated. They've actually changed the words because in the song, the nephew says, but Auntie Maine, it's only a week after Thanksgiving. <laughs> They've changed it to it's the week before Thanksgiving. They didn't decorate as early back then when that was written. But the point is in the midst of what's going on, we need some happiness right now. We need a distraction. We need to jump right into Christmas and celebrate it right now. Is it Christmas that way sometimes? A nice distraction to the reality of life, to the things that are going on that we're struggling with or we don't want to think about and Christmas is that burst of happiness and that busyness as we focus in on, on decorations and baking and putting up the tree and the lights and going to parties and shopping and wrapping gifts and all the things that are involved, that it can be a needed distraction. But a lot of times we tend to find out that either after the Christmas celebration is over, or maybe even before, that all the happiness we try to force into things, the reality is still there. The people that Isaiah is writing to were looking for a distraction, a relief, uh, a way out. And we heard in Isaiah chapter 35, Isaiah speak of deserts, and gardens and a highway. In order to understand what's happening and what Isaiah is talking about in chapter 35, we really need to know what's going on with the people of Judah. What's happening from chapters 1 to 34? And what's happening, this is about 700 years or so BC before Christ, and the the nation of Judah is no longer the great powerful nation that it once was under King David. Instead, they're weak. They don't have much of an army. They're poor. They don't have hardly any power. They're not a mighty nation at all. They're, they're, they're pretty helpless. And their biggest threat is Assyria. And Assyria is a mighty, powerful nation that is simply going through and gobbling up other nations. So what do they do? They look south. They look south to Egypt. They look at Egypt, which is a mighty nation with strong cities and a powerful army. And they look to Egypt that they form an alliance with Egypt that Egypt will be able to, to protect them. Egypt will be able to stand up to any of their enemies. Egypt will give them safety and security. Oh yeah, they're going to have to give up some things, like trusting in their promises of God that they've trusted in for generations. 
And, you know, they'll have to, you know, worship other gods. But they'll have their land. And they'll have safety. Chapter 34 comes along and God says, not so fast. You think you're in a desert and you look to Egypt and you think Egypt is going to turn you into a garden. I'm going to make you a garden. But that's not the case. Because Egypt is going to be destroyed. He says, don't look to Egypt. You look there and you see wonderful, beautiful streams. And the reality is, those streams are just black, dark pitch. You look at the fields of grain and you think of the abundance, but it's all going to become nothing but wasteland and dirt. You look at a strong, powerful city, but it's going to be abandoned and all that's going to be left are the scavengers and the animals that are simply devouring you. <coughs> You're hoping for a garden, but it's a desert because they don't know me and they don't trust me, is what the Lord is saying to the prophet Isaiah. And the, the, the message that he gives is that not all deserts are deserts, and not all gardens are gardens. And there is a highway. That's the message of chapter 35. Not all gardens are gardens, not all deserts are deserts, and there is a highway. What's the highway for? Highways are to get somewhere fast, right? Unless you live in the Bay Area. <laughs> <laughs> but in the Midwest, a highway is so you can get through where you don't want to be. If you're in one city and you want to go to another city and there's nothing but farmland between that city and the other city and nothing you want to stop and see, you get on a highway, you set the cruise control, and you're gone. And you can get through it. And that's the promise that the Lord makes to his people. That not all gardens are gardens and not all deserts are deserts. And there is a highway. So through the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah says to the people, you see a desert. <coughs> you see wasteland. You see destruction. That's not what I see. Isaiah says, I see flowers. I see streams. I see growth. Isaiah says, not only do I see flowers, I see the crocus. In the Midwest, the crocus is such a welcome flower. It's the first one that blooms. It sometimes even pops up through the snow. And the beautiful crocus, Isaiah is saying, I see the purple and the yellow and the white, and I see the color bursting forth, and I see the, the carpet of color. You look and, and you see dirt and wasteland. He says, I see trees, tall trees, sturdy trees, trees with nest in it from the birds, trees full of life. He says, you see burnt, dry ground. He says, I see streams bubbling up. And I see them, the water pooling together in deep pools that you can drink out of, that you can jump into and refresh yourself. Isaiah says to the people, you are trying to look to Egypt and, and bring that in as fleeting happiness, as, a, as turning your desert into, the, into a garden. But not all deserts are deserts. you got to know how to look. And what you have to look at is the truth of who God is and the truth of His promises. Egypt is the wrong way to go. Egypt, what their relief will be is going to be fleeting. But continue to trust me. Continue to trust in my promises. Because those who cling to, to the Lord, those who hold on to all of the Lord's promises, He will never abandon. It's 
been his promise all the way through, all through Scripture. He never will abandon those who trust in him. And there's always a highway, a way through, a way out. Now, we may not be facing an Assyrian army, but we see deserts, and we see gardens. And life at times can be like a desert. Life can seem pretty barren, hopeless, and the things that just keep piling on and piling on. The things that are that we pray about and we continue to pray out, pray about day after day and week after week. Maybe the names for who we pray for change, but the things we're praying about continue to be the same. There continues to be illness, there continues to be unemployment, there continues to be financial struggles, there continue to be relationship things. The names may change. But as time goes on, we continue to groan to the Lord and pray to the Lord. Because of the desert that life often feels like. We've all been there at one time or another. Maybe you're there now. And we can try and bring a garden into our desert. We can try to look to other things that will bring happiness to us. To give us some kind of relief, some kind of break, some kind of escape from what's happening. But it's fleeting. And the Lord says, I provide a highway. I provide a way through and a way out. And the highway? It's Jesus Christ. The only hope and the only salvation is Jesus Christ. The one who came into the desert of sin and brokenness into our world. The one who came in and he brings about the garden through his life and his death and his resurrection. The one who comes in and who changes things. The disciples of John go to Jesus, are you the one? And Jesus says, go back and tell John what you see. The lame walk. The deaf hear. The mute speak. The dead are raised. Jesus did it. And he continues to do it. He continues to, to reach out to us with hope. And the message of, of Isaiah, the message for us this day is the Lord says... Trust me. Because those who trust me, I'll never abandon. He says, sometimes you look at life and all you can see is the desert. And the Lord says, look at me and see the flowers. Look at my promises and, and see the streams. Look at the hope that I give and see the refreshment that comes. Because we can have box after box after box after box of Christmas decorations. We can have a mountain of presents. We can have lights galore. We can do all kinds of parties and fill our schedule with all kinds of things and try to bring in happiness. And we're still in the desert. Christ, he's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the highway. And joy comes in knowing Christ. Joy comes in him putting us on the right path. Joy comes in the knowledge of his love and his forgiveness. Joy that can never be taken away from us. Enables us in the midst of the desert to see the garden. The garden of God's promises, the garden of God's love. So my challenge for you this week 
as you sit around in your family gatherings, whether it's a, a meal or taking a break from watching TV, make a list of the flowers and the streams that are in your life. That God is, see how God is at work, because sometimes we're so focused in on the desert, we can't see the garden. <coughs> Put some emphasis on what Isaiah says. Look and see the right way. Because not all gardens are gardens and not all deserts are deserts. But there's a highway. Christ has come. He has changed everything. And he's the one who brings joy. And we also have the joy that he's coming again. He's coming again. And he's going to take us to be with him forever, and there will be eternal joy that will never end, and no more deserts at all. And so we pray, come Lord Jesus, come, come quickly. And as we wait, we trust. We trust in the one who turns deserts into gardens. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We worship the Lord with our